Let's have a quick look at the Sinclair Black Watch after 46 years! Well, as a spotty 16 year old in uh, January of 1976, I went down the local newsagent and got a copy of Practical Electronics, as I did every month. On, they had one order for me. And uh, leafing through the uh, said magazine, I came across this ad. And this ad was for, like, you know, the you know, the Holy Grail, you know, a digital watch that you could afford almost and build it yourself. Which, what could be more fun? And uh, I don't know how I scraped together the 1795 because uh, when I started work later at the end of 76, my first week's wages was only £19. So uh, nearly a whole week's wages on a watch. <laughs> what does that equate to today? Well, microphone problems again. So this is me. Voice over man. And here we have, I've connected a power supply to the back of the watch. I'm just holding the crop clips in, which is a bit intermittent, but it gives you an idea that you press a button, you see the time, and uh, while you're holding it, it stays there, and you let go, and it goes away. And of course, if you held it too often, the, uh, the little batteries went flat. But uh, it was fun while it lasted. Here's a quick picture showing a close-up of the watch and the power supply that's powering it. 3 volts. It's drawing about 2 milliamps, which is about what the lowest power supply reads. And you jump up, it's like up into the, what, 30, oh, it's up to about 60 then. 60 milliamps while the uh, display is lit. Not very good for those tiny batteries. You can see here that the back of the battery holder is basically the flexi PCB glued or stuck to the case and uh, that, mark, that makes the two ends of the battery connection as I wobble it around. This little clip coming in hooks under the plastic spacer in the middle between the batteries and forces the batteries down onto the flexi PCB but it was prone to uh, if you hit your hand or you hammered something with your hand, the little clip would bounce and the batteries used to have like an oily film that would come out of them and uh, it would land on that and the watch would stop. The only thing missing now is on the battery flap there was a little tag that uh, went into, just sort of laid against the case, which I'm trying to show is actually missing. That broke off after uh, a while of use. As you can see, it's a bit kind of scratched and that because it was worn. I did use it a lot at college. As my main go-to watch but it had issues the strangest ones were if I put it on the left hand side of my bed on the shelf overnight it gained time if I put it on the right hand side of the bed on the record player it lost time and if I wore it in bed the batteries would be flat by the morning and uh, yeah. this was the metal bracelet option which uh, was more than the standard kit price. I can't remember by how much, because the normal the, the kit price came with uh, a plastic strap. And this is the box that it came with when you finished building it. You could keep it in your box. It's a bit tatty. It's been laying around in various different places for the last I don't know since since around seventy six. It had to be built before mid seventy six because that's when I left school and I built it while at school. Because I had to machine the end of the soldering iron down to about point, well, about to about a millimeter, to do the fine soldering. And uh, I've still got the uh, original Sinclair digital watch <laughs> pamphlet or operation manual. So uh, after all these years, it's managed to hang around the watch. And unfortunately, as a youngster, I wrote inside it. So here it is, you know, how to use it. looking good uh, so there you have it yeah a quick look at the Sinclair black watch from 1976 if you like what you see hit the subscribe button click the bell hit you know bash the hell out of the like button bash the hell out of everything 
comment. Can't comment enough. Look at that hard cop case. Keep your watch safe since 76. And I'll catch you on the next one.